today on City Lines Fall Premier Week. Oh, a mess! We're serving up a pumpkin spice burst of fall inspiration. This is not something that you cannot do. Then, <laughs> I think our style you could call winning. Winning. <laughs> A design face-off. <laughs> it's the drama of it all. It looks phenomenal. Our experts team up to deliver style savvy spaces. You'll want to pin to your mood board. The inspiration is urban chic. Was it urban chic? Urban sophisticated chic. Sorry, what was I thinking? It's City Life with Tracy Moore. Welcome to City Line. Fall is my kind of season. She's so pretty. So get ready for some major fall inspiration on today's show. We're going to show you how to make a Pinterest perfect mood board to make this autumn awesome. So our experts are pairing up to decorate with the season's Pinterest trends in two very distinctive styles. I won't call it a competition, but it's kind of a competition. So team number one is Christian Dare and Carson Arthur. Team number two, Leanne Allaire Perot and Frank. Ready to compete. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I see you there doing your hamstring stretches there, quad stretches. Yeah. Let's talk, Carson and Christian, about what your design look is. What are you doing over there? So, I don't know what we exactly called it, <laughs> <laughs> but we believe that black is beautiful. So, yes. we did modern, sophisticated, chic porch. Oh, I like it. This and is you know what? You what? Paint your house, yes. You need a slimming effect. Black, black, it's black. <laughs> it's the drama of it all. It looks mm. phenomenal. So I can't wait to get into that. We're going to start over here uh, with L.A. and Frank. So what have you all done with your space drastically different from theirs, which I love? Yeah, they, you know, they have their style. I their like darkness. to call. They have their our, darkness. <laughs> I think our style you could call winning. Winning. In comparison, <laughs> yeah. I or think we'll so. call it modern farmhouse. Modern farmhouse. Very nice. We yeah. know that folks are very much about the farmhouse, and it's nice that you've gone modern with it. It's yes. been a trend that's been around, and people have been loving for a while now. But you've done your own little twist on it. So walk us through what we're seeing right now. It all works gorgeously together. Well, let's take a seat. It's okay, very let's take a seat. <laughs> it's a party. See, we're celebrating our yes. winning style. <laughs> So yes, I think we can get cozy because that's part of this whole look that it is comfortable, it's casual, yeah. but it's still elevated. Like it's very pulled together. It is. And we pulled this together together. Yes. We did this as okay, a joint what was project. That like because you're both incredible, speedy, um, efficient workers to work together. Like did you play nicely together? Well, we're both also scatterbrains. <laughs> So, yeah, so in yes. order to pull Shiny. this together, we, we needed some vision. We really needed yes. to coordinate together before we even met. Yeah. So it's, it's almost this is like a good thing to do as a couple where you're like, you tell me totally. your vision in life, I'll tell you mine. We'll get together and try to mesh them together. Right. That's right. right. And if that's happening in my house, you can give me your vision, but I'm going to win. <laughs> It's good, to, it's good to have sort of a collaborative thing so mm -hmm. you can see who wants what, right? That's How it. it all works together. So we actually use the Pinterest app. Oh, good. And we're able to do a collaborative board. Mm -hmm. So for both of us, we went on independently and pinned images that meant modern farmhouse style to us. Nice. And what I loved about that process for both of us is we weren't thinking about the specific pieces in the set. Yeah. It was just what were we drawn to, what were the elements that spoke to us to really bring that style to life. And yeah. then we were able to look collaboratively Mm -hmm. at all of the images and find all of those kind of silver threads that tied everything together. So yeah. a lot of the things that we were looking at were the natural woods, a lot of texture, heavy, mm -hmm. heavy texture. This was the style board that we ended up putting together. It's nice. And you can just see that the plants really w are what brought the whole look to life. Yeah. But the backbone were the architectural clean lines, which lend itself to modern in the farmhouse, mm -hmm. and then some rustic and texture. Some yeah. A little bit of like, a little bit of grudge, a little bit of dinge yeah. on yeah. there, just to, to give it more of that casual, authentic. comfortable feel. It yes. It authentic. And that's the whole idea is you can go to many different stores, locations, and be overwhelmed. Yes. Sometimes when you're thinking, I want to do a room, I want to do a porch, I want to do a landscape, mm -hmm. you go into these big stores, these big settings, and you become overwhelmed. This yes. actually allows you to have a little bit more focus. You can look at some central themes yeah. and then pull it all together and then really create something that works together. 
That is a good, it's a good to ground yourself yes. when you're gonna start a project like this. You wanna show me some of the plants you have over there, uh, yeah. Frankie, because plants really do something awesome in a space. They yeah, for somebody that's gonna see. Anybody home? <laughs> Nobody's home. <laughs> Nobody's home. Nobody's home. Always <laughs> but you know, first off are the containers. So these containers, which are amazing, they're actually, they look like they're wet wicker, but they're resin. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. with that, they're incredibly durable. So yeah. they can take all seasons, but as well, they're lined. So even if they're used indoors, they're not going to leak on the floor. Super oh, important. Awesome. Uh, this is, you know, when you think about farmhouse, you think about classic plants. Yeah. Well, this is a classic plant, which is a hydrangea, but this is limelight hydrangea. So it's a new variety uh -huh. of an older plant named hydrangea. That is a beautiful chartreuse green that then goes to white, then then goes to pink. Really oh, stands up nice. very well. Can be used in a pot, but then planted in the garden to overwinter. Lovely. Of course, you're going to do your ornamental cabbage and or kale, which mm -hmm. gives you that fall look. But the bluey greens really tie in with the white and the grays. Super nice as well. Yep. A reminder when you're using this as well, buy a front door. Mm -hmm. uh, later on in the winter season, if they start to rot, they'll stink. Like, yeah, they're going to, they smell <laughs> like farts. Yeah. Like, have you ever smelled rotten party cabbage? House. Like, bad, bad. <laughs> but then you have just some wonderful greens, something like a boxwood or a yew, your fall mums that you have in there. They can be perennial, depending upon your zone. So these are just ways just to soften. Remember, plants are like little paint chips yeah. yes. that allow you to paint uh, like and allow you to be that artist in your own space. Love it. And really, there's so many other plants that you could think about with modern farmhouse. You could also think about lilacs for springs mm -hmm. because that's a classic farm. Uh, but you're trying to create a modern look. So there's some dwarf varieties of uh, lilacs called Miss Kim. Yeah. They're, and even Bloomerang, which is, a, those oh, are other varieties. I like these names. Yeah. Right? Very nice. Okay, so it's good to mix and match. You haven't been too precious over there. No. You're just no. putting in whatever works all together, and which is lovely. That's what I love what Frank did. This wasn't like constructing this no. overly methodical urn with all of these different elements. Yeah. Quite literally, they're all individual and independent. That, As Frank said, like the hydrangeas, plant them in your garden. Mm -hmm. afterwards as well but it's it's I love the collected feel of it and again that lends to the layered approach of that casual farmhouse yes. feel. Yeah, well, I'm loving the furniture too yes. so let's talk a little bit about the decor you've got gorgeous pieces in here. So when I went up to see Frank at the Garden Gallery in Barrie yeah. this piece we both went Woo! for all the squirrel <laughs> syndrome that we have we can get distracted uh -huh. this immediately spoke to us yeah. and it's because it's so beautiful but it's also so practical can yes. I just say this looks like a beautiful rustic raw wood but tap, tap, oh, it's actually aluminum made to look awesome. like wood so it's super lightweight needs zero maintenance yeah. because you don't have to worry about staining the, the wood or having it fade so this is super practical and has very much an indoor feel yeah. that I love and I really love the rope detail here again the added uh, layers and the texture there mm -hmm. in these pieces and if you have space for an occasional seating area I know you love your porch oh, you spend so much porch. time on your porch. We're it's all about the porches today because yes. when I was talking to the audience about this, we were dreaming up porches. You want a wraparound porch and I get it. I would love a wraparound but the porch for me is an, is an extra room in our house. Yes. Mm -hmm. I stay on that porch for as long as possible. Absolutely. When I start getting internal summers, Heat? A hot <laughs> flash. You? I don't know why I you're using you. euphemisms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hot flash. Tell I me open more the door this. and I go outside. I just know to stay Frankie's away when like, that's happening. Frankie's like, what is she saying? <laughs> I go outside on the porch. Yeah. So it's really nice. You can you extend sort of a whole new room in your house by using your front porch. So this is one I'd like to sit on too. Right. So you have and, a nice one here. And the nice thing about this furniture as well is it's so modern that it can be used indoors. Super lightweight. Oh gosh, so if yeah. you have 100%. a couple extra guests that are there. Yeah. You can pop it inside. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, if you're getting a little bit older, it's really hard to be carrying furniture around and right. because for winter, easily stored. And that's what I like about the really, it's so light. It yes. It's yes. so light. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Right. Okay, so the other thing I love about this, I love the light uh, the light fixtures you have outside. Those are gorgeous. The light fixtures were, believe it or not, an Amazon find Ooh. in the hammered metal and then the wood detail. Again, those connecting points. So those were two elements that we had put on the style board. Yeah. So when we were shopping, it was easy easy to hone in on exactly those kind of finishes that would bring the style to life. So good. those were a massive win. And I 
also just wanted mm -hmm. to point out my little bit of dinge at the side here. I went into my garage and had this little painter's bench, the little it's stool dinge, there. It's authentic. It's, it's authentically <laughs> rustic. Yes, she it's got all it nice. house 64. Right? But it's got the splattered paint, it's got it. the distressed wood on it, and it makes a perfect little plant stand. You did a great job. Both of you did a great job. Did they win? We don't know yet. Yeah. Be sure to follow City Light on Pinterest for these trends Winners. and so much more fall in. <laughs> <laughs> Scan the QR code on your screen right now to check out our page. So, um, just before we go to break, you know what time of year it is. Do you know what time of year it is? It is September Swing! Here, but Frankie, why don't you go out there and pick someone to help us out? Okay. Who's let's... he gonna pick? Who's he gonna pick? Green is my favorite color. <laughs> green is my favorite color. She's wearing green. Okay, sit yeah. down. You down. Down. have a scene here. Yep. We were talking about the wraparound porches. What's your name? Stacy. Stacy. I like it. It rhymes with Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> So this is what you have to do. Okay. You've got to you've got to hit the swag switch when I tell you to. Okay. That will set off the wheel of prizes. It's going to go bu -bu 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 and land on a prize, and you're going to get it in the whole audience. <gasps> so when, we're going to do a little countdown. Okay. Are you no ready, Stace? Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, Three two, two, one. Hit the switch. What you got? Okay, I don't know what that is, but it looks good. Still, <laughs> what are they getting? Tracy, let's get organized this season with this multi-purpose utility cart. IKEA's rest Club fits in the smallest spaces and can be moved to wherever you need it. The kitchen, the office, or the bedroom. The options are endless. You are all going home with this utility cart plus a $200 IKEA gift card. Thanks, so you, Stacy. Everyone watching at home, go to cityline.tv or scan this QR code on your screen right now, and you have a chance to win all of the swag we are handing out on today's show. Yeah, there's more to come. I think you deserve it. Let's go to break. We have more coming up. Stay with us. Stay yeah. Coming up. An autumn grazing station you'll fall for. Really, it's something that you can put together at home. You just have to pick elements and then go with it. Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk food. You know, some of our fall favorites are here on this gorgeous table. We've got Sarah Jamin Yassin with us right now. She did all of this. <laughs> And this time of year, that's what you think about. You think about the fall harvest. Correct. Now, you have done this gorgeous harvest table, but it's, it's with a twist. So you're taking some of our fall favorites and doing them a little bit differently. What was your, did you have like a Pinterest inspo or are you the Pinterest inspo? Because this could be on Pinterest. No, I had a Pinterest inspo, but I wanted to show elements that you can create at home. Yeah. This is not something that you cannot do. So really I started with woods because when you think about fall, you think about warm textures, warm colors. So I did wood, coppers, and then I did potted mums, a little Beautiful. bit of like candles that are nice, yeah. grapes, breads. So really it's something that you can put together at home. You just have to pick elements and then go with it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the food on the table. A lot of people think fall, they think corn. Yeah. Right? Because tis the season to enjoy the corn. Corn on the cob. You can take it off the cob. You can roast the corn. So many different options. So, so I wanted to ways. show you the coolest way. So when you serve corn and you have a party, yeah. do you butter the corn or not? I, I give the butter separately, and then everybody has the option of going as crazy as they want with so the butter. So everybody's there with a knife buttering their yes. corn. Okay, yes. so I wanted to show you the best hack. Okay. So here I have hot water, yep. and I have melted butter. Mm. So just like how oil doesn't mix with hot water, neither yeah. does butter. Okay. So we're going to be putting our melted butter oh. in our hot water. So it's going to rise to the top. Oh, okay, cool. and the reason I put hot water is you can't put a whole jug of butter. It'll be too expensive. Yeah, that's not too expensive. <laughs> so 
So with save your money. So mm -hmm. with the hot water, it also warms your corn. So okay. your guests can stick this on a skewer. Yeah. And then dunk the corn in, and oh. then on the way up, it's coated in butter. I'm just gonna stick this here. That is beautiful. Then what a good idea. You have yeah. all of your toppings. You can have chili, black pepper, black pepper, salt yeah. on this side. So they stick it on their plate and they coat it. Yes. Simple. That is so simple. And let me just say right now, you don't double dip in the hot <laughs> butter. Okay? You don't. Do that with people you like and you watch them. You only go in once. Come on. But I, I like that. the idea of putting all of that stuff around because it's going to stick to the hot butter now. And actually oh. your butter is coated and you don't have to worry about it's not melted. Yeah. It's melted perfectly. I would jump into that, but you know it's going to get all in my teeth. So it's okay. It's corn. I'm going to wait till after. But you do have some Something there that maybe I can eat, and it's corn ribs. It's corn what ribs. What is going on right, right now? So Tell we me. always have corn as is, yeah. or we take the corn off. So with corn ribs, what I did mm -hmm. is that I took a corner of the cob, I cut it in half, and then I cut it in four. Yeah. And what it looks like are these. So it oh, looks cool. like mini corn ribs. Yeah. So then what you do is you season this with salt, black pepper, coated with olive oil, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of garlic powder. Nice. And then you roast it on your barbecue. Okay. Until it gets nice and fluffy. So this is our this is our ribs. This like, is our ribs. And you eat it like that. Huh? So it's a little bit peppery, I have to say. Oh, it's very good. But it's a different way of eating corn. It's very, mm -hmm. very unique. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna do this for the rest of the segment. Okay. So as we're looking at what our else you got? As we're looking at our table, and it looks beautiful. It's mm -hmm. not only about the looks, it's, it's about delicious. the smells of mm -hmm. our table. So think about when you get home and you have a nice warm apple pie in your oven. Mm. The smells, the aroma, the feels. Uh -huh. So for fall harvest time, how nice would it be to bring that to your party? So in a little um, fondue pot, I created a little potpourri pot. I oh, put nice. apples, I put rosemary, bay leaves, some cinnamon sticks, and some um, spice. And mm -hmm. then what you do is that you put your fondue pot on and have it on simmer, and the smells and the aroma will last mm. the whole party. That's beautiful. And then people walk in and they know the theme, the vibe is yep. very fall and yummy. Okay, let's talk about pumpkins, shall we? Oh, yes. Uh, we think fall, we think pumpkins. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening. You've taken the pumpkin and done them a little bit differently. Yes, so let's start over here. So yeah. we wanted to incorporate pumpkin in a staple, so hummus. Yes. So what I did is I bought store-bought hummus, mm -hmm. and then I added pumpkin puree to it. So two to three tablespoons of pumpkin, and really you just have a pumpkin twist to a very unique item. It tastes delicious. Yeah. And pumpkin puree, very good for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then next, we mm -hmm. wanted to do uh, a little inspiration of pumpkin with our cheese. Mm. So again, a store-bought cheese ball. Yep. What I did is I coated it in cheddar cheese, yeah. wrapped it in a ball of uh, cellophane, yeah. and then put... That's this right yep. here. That's so cool. Put rubber bands around it to create it the look of a pumpkin, and yeah. then I put a piece of green pepper on top, and it just looks like a pumpkin cheese ball. That is so cute! A pumpkin cheese ball. That's lovely. Okay, so there's another way you can do pumpkin, and yes. that is pumpkin pie. pie. Yes. And that's sort of what most of us do with pumpkin pie, but you've done something a little bit different. So we all have pumpkin pie that we get from the store. Sometimes mm -hmm. it looks like this. It doesn't look the best. We serve it. Yeah. But how do you elevate your pumpkin pie? So I'm doing mini pumpkin pie. So I have a pie uh -huh. cutter. Nice. And my tip would be to do this while the pumpkin pie is cold, so it's not as messy. Yeah. So take it and really just... Swirl it around. Oh, and it just comes out like that. It just huh? comes out very clean. And then take a finger, your finger, or yeah. you can take a spoon, and then you just oh, scoop it so out. Good. And yeah. then you have an individual pumpkin pie that does not look like if it's a uh, store bought. Yeah, I love that. So no then I will know. finish it with whipped cream. Okay. Hot tip though don't yeah. put your whipped, whipped cream on ahead of time. Because it'll look like this. Yes. So put it on when you're ready to serve. We, we live and learn on this show, I get it. Oh, that looks Swirl gorgeous, it Sarah. Up. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. That's yeah. so good. Okay, and I know you have another thing here, which I've never seen before, and that is uh, pumpkin, pumpkin punch. punch. So everybody's about heard about pumpkin lattes, pumpkin yeah. punch. It's just a really Caribbean-inspired fruity punch mm -hmm. with, uh, we've carved out a pumpkin and it has coconut water, orange juice, pomegranate juice, yeah. a little bit of lime, and some ginger ale. And it's just a really fruity, fun punch. Sarah, absolutely beautiful. You Trini? Trini? No, Guyanese. Guyanese, okay. I knew there was something happening there. <laughs> um, everything looks beautiful. Thank you for that. This is Pinterest-worthy. I want to eat it all. It's time for a break. Stay with us, everyone.
Классный чуть. Coming up, can this, a modern take on fall decor? Because you're working in black, it looks minimal. turning Pinterest dream boards into reality. So we've got dynamic duo Christian and Carson here. That's right, to unveil their space. And this space promises to be every porch lover's fantasy. So you told us earlier the inspiration is urban chic. Was it urban chic? Urban sophisticated chic. Sorry, what was I thinking? Urban sophisticated, urban sophisticated sexy sophisticated chic. Sexy Chic, and I do think of all those words when I see this because the drama of it all, right? Absolutely beautifully done. Uh, walk us through how we yeah. can transform our porches. So first we started with going on to Pinterest because I love to find mm -hmm. inspiration there. So what's so funny is I was looking at black porches because I think we all know I have a black house in New Orleans. Yes. So then it was so funny, I got an email from Carson. Yeah. And what did you want to do? I have a black house in Prince Edward County. So we're like, let's right. go walk. Yay. Right. Exactly. Unlike yours, Prince Edward County in New Orleans, he's, they're the white guys in the black house and yes. everyone else on the street. It's, true. <laughs> it's very true. Black people in white houses and then there's you. Yeah. Right? Literally, I live on a street where we're the only white family and we have a black house and all the black people have white houses. Like, <laughs> what? We don't know about them too. Yeah. Yeah. But they always stop and chat with us. Like, we love it. It's so good. It's a good porch. Because the trick also, yeah. why I love painting houses black, I know it's very on trend right now, but if you've got an older house, ours was like kind of a buttery yellow, painting yeah. it black, it looked like brand new wood, brand new house, sophisticated. It hides every defect like you do when you wear black. <laughs> it makes your house slimming and beautiful all of a sudden, right? It is right? gorgeous. It's very nice. And to be honest, my house is born batten. So this technique is exactly what I did in my house yeah. using almost the exact same paint color. So I, this is me. I love this look. And yeah. all of our guests say the same thing. They love it and go home and do the same thing. In their your houses. house is gorgeous. We Thank almost you. didn't leave your house. We loved it so much. It's beautiful. And what's funny is I had no idea about that yeah. when I installed the Baden Borton. It's oh, like telepathic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> Wave so leg. one of the tricks I feel with like starting to be modern chic is I think some people think they need to do minimalist and pair back. Yeah. I don't think anyone would call this porch minimalist. There's a <laughs> lot going on right now. Yeah. But because you're working in black, it looks minimalist, right? So that's one of the tricks is to do a lot. So I wanted to install sort of like a feature wall because sometimes we have those walls on our porches with no windows, no nothing. It's just kind of blah. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually installed all these great IKEA lanterns. So they're a great price. So you can do a giant grid. I use some like battery operated candles so you get this beautiful moonlight at night. Nice. And if you just hang them in a grid, it'll look like this instant sophisticated porch. And it really was easy, to be honest. It took maybe 10 minutes to hang them all. It was super easy. And oh, the good. trick I did was you could actually hang them through the grid with just a screw versus doing one of those giant hooks where they hang out and swing. Smart. Yeah, and this way they're gonna actually going to stay put. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the vegetation happening here, and then right. we'll get back to the decor. So this is everything, what you're seeing here. It, it softens it. Well, absolutely, and that's the thing about black, is people don't want that... Halloweeny black feeling yeah, of the, no. you know the monster of the Adams house, yes. but they still want texture on texture and colors to complement the black. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit later: is how you use your plants, how to use specific color blocking for your plants yeah. to bring out the best of your black home, but also how to add personality because you want your own personality in the space. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it with plants. Also, how to have a very low maintenance pet, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> So low maintenance doesn't even need food or walks, which is incredible. That's a gorgeous looking puppy right there. Let's talk furniture. So decor wise, yeah. I kind of cheated because I love to cheat the rules. This is what I do in my life. Um, I was told it's a covered porch, as you can see, the roof. Yes, it's covered. So I always try and offer stuff totally. furniture that will do well in weather without being full out in rain or sun. So I kind yeah. of skipped that typical aluminum and outdoor fabric patio furniture. Yeah. Not to throw shade at any other porches oh. happening today. He's throwing shade, all right. We are in a black porch. You have to throw shade. <laughs> so I actually opted for these very, like, mid-century modern chairs. Yeah. They're actually made from a wood and a leather. Cows survive in the mist. Your chair will survive with a covered porch. Sure will. Don't leave them out for the winter, but they will survive fine. If there's a full rainstorm, maybe pull them in if it's like mm -hmm. hurricane weather. Right. But pick them up at Home Sense, so great price. And then I threw in some great print with these sort of designer pillows. Those are gorgeous. Great print. They add a color. And because they're these new sort of outdoor fabrics, they don't look like an outdoor fabric, but they do well outdoors. At all. 
beautiful. I thought these were indoors for nope, sure. Nope, They're nope, beautiful. Nope. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the uh, decor and everything and the plants, and it's gorgeous, yeah. but uh, I'm feeling a little parched. It's I like I'm sitting like on the front porch, yeah. and I feel like if there was a drink, it would be a great time. I feel on the like front maybe porch. you know me far too well. I really do. Yeah, and you know <laughs> that I love to pry judges. Yes. Because I hear you're judging this whole competition. <laughs> so I did a quick DIY because I love a good DIY. So this is not art; it is a Murphy bar Whoa. for your front porch. So, and because it's me, and I like a full stocked bar. It's another oh, wow. one. Pretty so genius. I made these. So I pre-made them. These are actually an Amalfi spritz. So it's literally uh, Wait, two is this parts. For Tracy or for me? That's for Tracy. We've got <laughs> drinks for everybody. So literally, it's got two parts. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for Tracy. So literally, it's a blood orange soda mixed with the Amalfi gin, a little bit of prosecco. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> That's good. A straw. Gin. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks kindly. So really easy and refreshing, and it's great for when the kids go to bed. You can hang out by the candlelight. Mm. You've got a little hidden bar. Whoa, Ooh, you've got whoa. a heavy hand. Free pour. <laughs> this is why he is not a bartender. We're bribing the judge. I gotta get broke. through the whole show. <laughs> that is so good. Yeah, I love I it. I've never up. seen a Murphy bar, seen lots of Murphy beds, but that is fantastic. Yeah. So we've got more with Carson and Christian coming up. And in the meantime, Cheers. how about a little more sweat? Yeah. excited in the bar over there but you, you can see it's not very subtle there's something under here okay <laughs> so I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna get one of you to do it what's your name Chantel Chantel do you want to stand up for me sure. okay so this is lovely you match the gift awesome. <laughs> I planned it. we're gonna do a little countdown okay. and on the countdown you're gonna lift the box up and we're gonna see what you and the whole audience is winning okay three two one lift it up oh Stu, can you tell us? Meet the ultimate sidekick for party planning, gift giving, and personalization. Cricket. DIYers will love the new Cricket Joy. Cricket's most compact, smart cutting and writing machine. All of you are taking home your very own Cricket Joy machine. But wait, there's more. You're also getting the Cricut Joy Starter Kit, Smart Vinyl and Iron-On Sampler Kits, and Transfer Tape. All of this valued at $300. What do you hear, Chantel? She did very well for you all. Enjoy that. Let's go to break. More coming up, everyone. How to bring life to modern decor. Black plants are on trend right now. People love them. Coming up, things get lit with LA's DIY boot. I made them, and you know what? You can make them! Welcome back. It's our fall inspiration show, and throughout the show, we've got two teams going head-to-head -head in a front porch showdown using those trends. So Leanne and Frankie versus Carson and Christian, and remember... A porch is not truly complete without its green guardians, the plants. And I mean, I am a like admitted plant killer, but I understand the importance. I stay in the game. I keep getting new ones. Frankie loves that because he makes lots of money off of me. Perfect. Right. I love that too. Absolutely. So let's see how bringing nature into our design can really help. All right, so let's talk a little bit about black, first of all. Mm -hmm. Black houses, people are always a little worried because they have that, you know, the Adams family, the Munsters, <laughs> the kind of, is it dark and spooky? Yeah. And I mean, Christian's got a great pillow there. We're not yeah. going for the Halloween look. No. But no. that said, Gothic is huge right now. Okay. Gothic influences. I, I need to interrupt. When he said Christian has a great pillow, this was Carson's pillow. <laughs> 
I would not endorse this color. You're not claiming it. No, no not in this porch. Not in my porch. All right. And what's that one now, edit thing? porch. Yeah. It works with Farmhouse Modern. It doesn't work with mine. Right. Fair I don't enough. think it works with either of you, really. What does work with Modern Chic, though, yeah. are monochrome, monochrome color palettes for plants. Yes. And black plants are on trend right now. People love them. Now, these aren't true blacks. Even right. this guy here. Now, this is called the Black Mondo Grass. You're going to see colorations in the actual plant, yeah. whether it's a green or maybe a bit of a copper or a burgundy, that is going to pull out warm tones from your black that you choose for your house. Nice. So even though you're going with all black and very monochromatic here with hookara and tiarella and all the fun stuff, adding a little pop of white, black mm -hmm. and white is sexy. This is a great display and it's easy because when you're done with them, most of these can either go in the garden, out in the compost pile, or you can plant them somewhere else. Yeah. So you have other purposes for your black plants. But yeah. by adding texture and color and playing into your black space, you create that warm effect. And what's great Beautiful. with these ones is the paint color we did was Benjamin Moore Onyx, which is a more warm black versus mm -hmm. a blue black. So these warm, dark plants actually pull that out even more and give you that warmth. Absolutely. Okay, so if you want to go sort of black on black, that's mm -hmm. what you have going uh, on over there. But you can also do the opposite. My favorite is bright, vibrant, almost yes. a citric acid kind of green. Yeah, and plants beautiful. do that so well. Yeah. In fact, there's an example here. Like Here's a stunning. beautiful hookara, yeah. gorgeous color. But what's really interesting about green and bright green plants on a black backdrop yeah. is it's almost photo worthy. What happens is the sun hits the plant. It's gorgeous. The black acts as a backdrop. It frames the shape of your leaves. Mm -hmm. So it actually looks extra special. It looks extra crisp. Yeah. What I like to do in this situation, and there's some planters behind you, Tracy, yeah. where I've mixed evergreens and perennials and grasses to create that real citrus effect. Yeah. In three different sizes, three different heights. I've played with it a little bit. So the greens aren't all identical, but they all complement each other. Yeah. One of the pro tips that I always tell people is, and you probably do this too when you're shopping, when you're loading up your cart and you're putting things in your cart, color block in your cart. Yes. Right? So you're color blocking yes. right as you're rolling around the garden center right. and you're starting to find that things, the little hot spots that you're looking for. When you're color blocking in your cart, are you also talking to yourself? Because I'm doing that a lot. It's alarming. So my cheat is I wear the little earbud in the ear and I so pretend that I'm having a phone conversation Smart. with somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Smart. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I color block, but I just say, this is a pretty plant, not a hookah whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. But I if it looks pretty to get, it looks like beautiful lettuce. Yes, I like it. it. I only say that so lettuce. the people don't email me after the show saying, what was don't that plant? <laughs> so let's talk about color, color. Now, you notice Christian brought in some great pillows with that outdoor fabric. Color in a black backdrop still looks oh, fantastic. Nice. It still pops. It yeah. still creates the aesthetic that you're looking for, but you don't have to be afraid of adding the yeah. hot pinks, the purples and stuff around black because it looks fantastic. <laughs> I held that up with one hand. Honey, yeah. this is why I'm not a gardener. One of us is a landscaper and the other is Christian. The one other thing I do want to say before we... Yeah. Oh, Carla Miranda. There we yes. go. Yes. Yes. The one other thing I do want to point out that's a real benefit for black. Do you need some help with that? No, I'm good. We'll put it down now. So the one other thing... Yeah, the one other Thing that I want to point out is black is a perfect backdrop for shadows and we don't often talk about that mm -hmm. night lighting on a house whether it's a solar powered LED uh, light like this one yeah. or you have some beautiful down lights using the shapes of the leaves to bounce back against the black is huge yes. it actually looks great but then you get a little bit of movement at night a little bit of breeze with beautiful. the light behind it casting on here it is a showstopper in the yeah. neighborhood without it feeling Halloween. I mean, we don't want to say yes. that word, but yes. it gives you the texture that you're looking for without it being so obvious. Do we want to see it with the lights down? I don't know if it's going to work because okay. everybody's wearing bright colors in the audience today. It reflects oh. everywhere, but you know, okay, you get the it. idea. You get, you the, get the idea. Yeah. When it's nighttime, you have that spotlight on and it's like mm. drama. There we go. Very good. I love it. And I love all the shade thrown even between the two of you. <laughs> Scan the QR code on your screen right now to check out City Light on Pinterest. We have a lot of great content on there and follow us for these trends and so much more fall in spell. I believe it is time now, let me check, for a little swag. Okay? Oh. Let's do a little swag. So, we are going to be playing a little bit of a game and uh, I have Andrea here. Give her some love. How you doing, girl? Hi, good. How are you? Let's do one of these. Good. So, this is a little game called Swag Drop. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a little ball, which is right here for you. All right. And you are going to drop it down after we count three, two, one. Okay. Wherever it lands, we will see what prize you and the audience are going to okay. win. Are you ready, Andrew? I'm ready. Okay, everybody. <laughs> three, two, two one.
one, drop it. It landed on purple. Okay, Stu, what are they getting? Parents know keeping an eye on your little ones gives you peace of mind. The LeapFrog Wi-Fi Remote Access Camera Video Monitor from Babies R Us lets you listen and view from your smartphone and tablet, even when you're away from home. With advanced night vision technology, you'll be able to see your little one clearly in ultra-low light. It's worth $280, and you're all taking one home. Because you do not want to wake up that baby if you don't need to. Let's go to break. shorter. It's nice to add some outdoor lights to extend our evenings. I've noticed the mornings are already much darker, so that means it's going to get darker a little bit earlier. So LA has the perfect DIY for that. You're bringing light into our lives. Yes. What are we doing? We are going to make these outdoor lanterns. Ooh, and these she were, made that. I made them, and you know what? You can make them. You can <laughs> do it too. This is what I would classify as a very beginner DIY project. Would you? It might look intimidating. <laughs> but look at what's up here. No, but okay. Beginner. <laughs> okay. I, I have to tell you, yeah. one of the number one questions I get asked is mm -hmm. how do you use power tools? Can you show more with power yes. tools? Because I'm intimidated. And here's the easiest answer that nobody wants to hear. Yeah. The best way to learn is to try. True. So as long as you can get past the intimidation and get yeah. one in your hand, yeah. they're very easy to use. And every power tool simply replaces a hand tool. True. So it's actually going to make your life easier. They're not meant to be hard and yes. difficult. They're actually so, supposed to make it easier. True. Very yeah. true. You okay. just need to try. So on that note of the power tool yes. with this project, everything here that you need to build tool-wise, you can use a hand tool. Okay. I've Good just to know. used some power tools just for the speed of it to make yeah. my life easier. But if it, if you just have basic tools in your garage, you're just going to have to go out and buy a few simple materials to be able to create this. Which I want to also point out, these are a bit of a dupe from a store that shall remain nameless <laughs> that was charging over $300 for this size of lantern. Mm. Very, very similar. How much did yours cost? The small one was under $20, Ooh. and this one was about $25. Oh, okay. This girl loves to save because this girl is cheap. We're all on board. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive in. So I did go to the home improvement store and I picked up one by one wood dowel. So okay. these come in about four foot runs. So these will easily fit into the back of your car. You don't have to worry about eight or 12 foot runs of wood. Yeah. Uh, these ran me about $5 each. I used three four foot pieces to make the small one. Good. And then I also picked up a wood plank board. So this you can buy in four, eight uh, and six foot lengths as well. Yeah. Uh, this was eight inches, the long board, and then you just cut some squares. So once you've got your materials for wood, uh, again, you cut your squares, that's our top and bottom. Okay. And those four foot runs, I cut eight of this long piece, which is of the long rail, mm -hmm. and four of the smaller, which become all of our connecting pieces. Right. So as long as you are comfortable with a handsaw to chop a piece of wood, yeah. if you have a miter saw, just it's a straight chop because saying miter freaks people out. I don't know how to use that. <laughs> we're just making fancy. straight cuts. If you have a skill saw, a circular saw, anything, mm -hmm. we're just doing straight cuts for this entire project. Beautiful. And when in doubt, like I said, wood glue comes in handy and some finishing nails if you don't have a power tool. Now, I also want to point out that because this is just raw lumber, mm -hmm. I sanded it everything first. You so must you have because this feels beautiful. <laughs> it's like butter. Uh, like butter, baby. It really is. And you'll also notice that I did a bit of a radius yes. edge. I smoothed the, the edge, and this just gives it that little, like the little, like pop off of a more high end look yeah. than just straight cut lumber. It does. Well, it needs to look like it's three hundred dollars. So. Well, that's what we're going Do for. The edges. Exactly, exactly. So I used a gator sanding block again. If you have a mouse sander, that'll make things go faster. Yeah. And then I wanted to show you this. 
Have you seen this before? I feel like I've probably shown this on the show. It but looks maybe like not a talked about it. Looks it. like a cheesecloth. It looks like cheesecloth. Yeah, but it's but a it wax feels... cheesecloth. Yeah, it's sticky. It's waxy. That is called a tack cloth. Okay. And you use that to wipe down all of your wood ahead of time, and that takes all the sanding dust off. Oh, it's so just it's that smooth. little extra step. We don't want to be using water on there to wipe yeah. everything down because that can make the, the wood expand. Got it. All right, I'm gonna put on my safety goggles here. Oh, we're getting down to business. We're, we're getting into the power tool situation. <laughs> ah, this is my favorite part. So. Building the frames is super, super easy. Again, we're just taking a combination of our shorts and our longs. Mm -hmm. I have here a wood clamp. This is a corner clamp. Nice. That, this is not something that I would say you need, but for the beginner DIY, a great little investment just to give you that little sense of security and it safety. It helps, right? And then I put wood glue in, mm -hmm. and we're just going to fire in a couple of... Uh, so I'm using brad nails. If you've got a pin nailer, that's great yep. as well. And like I said, hand nails work great too. So that has just finished off one of our side frames. Beautiful. So we've got two of those. Yep. Super, again, entry-level DIY. We would then just add in, same thing with the nail gun, the side pieces. Now for the top and the bottom, I want to just quickly show that once you have it cut and you've got your whole frame built, nice. you want to just make sure that you're centered, uh, of course, on your top and bottom. So these two pieces here. And you'll notice that I drew on here uh, where smart. it's going to go on the top and the bottom because we're going to glue on one side and mm -hmm. then flip it over and make sure that the nails are going through the center oh. of what's stuck on the other side. It's one of those little steps, yeah. but it's so annoying and I've done it many times where I go, oh, I don't need to do that step, I'll skip it, and I fire a nail through and miss and then it's sticking out the end oh, of my shoot. project. Super okay. annoying, right? Yeah, Super no, this annoying. is why we like that you do the projects and then we can just follow. Let you know me make the mistakes, mistakes and yes. figure things out. So the last thing that I quickly want to show is the finish of this. So yeah. I actually used a Verithane stain in a nice dark color and painted over. Why would you do that, Leanne? Yeah. Because then with chalk paint over top, I'm gonna turn this around. You can take some water and you just do a little rub and it reveals the wood stain for that distressed look underneath. And then you just spray it with a indoor outdoor yeah. clear coat to protect it. Is she a genius or what? Right? <laughs> Thank you for your Pinterest perfect DIY inspo. Let's go to break. We got more coming up. Two teams went head to head in our front porch fall inspo board challenge. All right, audience, we've got to crown some winners today. It's really which style fits more with who you are, okay? Don't get mad at me, that's how it goes. We have Frank and Leanne with their modern farmhouse with applause. Yeah! Okay. with their sophisticated urban chic. What? for you, Stu. What are they getting this time? Uh... Furby is back. Generations of kids have loved this adorable, fuzzy, chatty, and curious little creature. And now today's kids can discover the all-new Furby with five voice-activated modes and over 600 phrases, jokes, songs, and so much more. You are all taking home a Furby friend of your own, valued at $100. That is a throwback on the hottest toy of the season. It's all coming back around. Thank you so much to our experts for serving up some great fall inspiration and showing us how to turn our Pinterest inspo boards into reality. You know what? You're a good audience. Thank you, audience. of your day. We will see you back here tomorrow for Fashion Friday.